Hello again guys, so today I'm going to be talking to you about converging lenses. Uh, you should have watched a previous video on uh, lenses in general, so now we're going to look at converging lenses. Um, and we're going to introduce a new concept of some ray diagrams, along with a little bit of uh, key vocabulary that you need to understand in order to do that. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Just a very quick little uh, recap for you. Uh, all this should be pretty familiar. Um, you should have the idea that if I have a converging lens, then it converges or brings together light rays. Uh, apologies for the slightly uh, dodgy videos there, but hopefully you can all identify on this video the focal point and the focal length. Um, I'm going to call this point here A, and I'm going to call that B, uh, and I'm going to call that C, um, and I'm going to call this point here D. Um, so can you, uh, just in your head, before we do anything else, can you tell me what are A, B, C, what well, no, which are the focal points and the focal lengths? Okay. Hopefully you've worked that out. Uh, you should have the idea that the focal point uh, is the point at which parallel beams of light will meet, and the focal length is the distance from the centre of the lens to the focal point. Cool. Right, now, ray diagrams. We're going to get loads of practice doing ray diagrams because you're going to do lots and lots and lots of them. Um, but this is a key examinable, an examinable skill, so I'm going to give you an example of how to do this now. So when you come in your exam to draw ray diagrams, um, you have to, you're going to be given uh, an image that looks something like this. So the first thing you have is a, a little arrow pointing up there, which we're going to call an object. So that object could be anything. It could be a tree. It could be a, uh, a person. And uh, if I remembered rightly, in your lesson, you actually made some images appear on the wall at the side of the classroom. So once you've made some images appear, we need to understand how those images got there, what caused them to be there. So what I'm going to introduce to you now is the idea of how we draw ray diagrams. And hopefully my uh, snazzy laptop is going to let me do what it is that I'm planning on doing. So here, uh, it's absolutely essential that you have a ruler, and you might find this really difficult in, um, to just do in your notes, because one thing that's really important um, is that for lenses, um, the focal length on either side um, is always the same. So this is uh, focal length f here, and this is focal length f here. If you're going to do this in your notes, you have to make sure that those two lengths are identical. If they're not, this won't work and you'll find it all goes crazy. In the lesson, I'm going to give you um, some example sheets where I very carefully measured it, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so basically speaking, um, when you want to draw a ray trace diagram, you want to draw up to three lines. Um, and what you'll find is you can't always draw these three lines because sometimes one of those lines will be missing. But if you can draw it, you do draw it. So the first one we're gonna, we always draw is one that is parallel to the focal plane. This is the focal plane. Um, so it's just uh, where, uh, sort of a line through the middle of the page. Yeah? I'll just move my head out of the way. That's the focal plane. Um, so the first line we draw, we draw it parallel to it, and we draw it up to the center of the lens. Uh, so it looks something like that. Now, if you think about what that's going to do, if you go back to the basic definition of what a converging lens does, which is here, a converging lens will take parallel beams of light and it will uh, refract them all so they move through the focal point. Now this first ray is a parallel beam of light. So what we can do is get our ruler and we can draw a line that will show us the path that that ray will follow. We know that that ray will go through the focal point. Yeah? 
So the ray is going to do something like that. The second ray you draw is one that goes from the top of the object through dead centre of the lens. Now this one's a little bit trickier to, um, for me to draw on the screen, but with a ruler on, um, on your person, it should be quite easy. Now a nice rule about going through dead centre of a lens is that that ray is always completely straight. And if you think about how refraction works, that kind of makes sense. Um, because when it goes in at the top of the lens, it will bend one way, and it will bend back by the same amount as it leaves. So what you end up with is a line that looks like this. So that is your second ray. Um, now this third ray that you're going to draw isn't always possible to do, um, because sometimes the object will be in a different place. But provided you, you think you can draw it, add it in whenever you can, all right? And for this third ray, it's going to go through the top of the object and then through the other focal point, like this. Now, this requires a little bit of imagination, um, but think about what that means. Well, light doesn't actually care whether it's going from one side of a lens or to the other side of the lens. So that means we can do something pretty interesting. What we can say is that because that light ray has gone through the focal length, sorry, through the focal point, when it leaves the uh, lens, it's going to go parallel to the principal axis. So it's going to go something like that. Now you can see that my uh, trying to draw on the screen hasn't worked perfectly, but what you'll find when you do this together is that all these light rays should cross at a single point. And where they cross at a single point, that is where an image would fall. Now it's pretty complicated to really understand why an image forms there, um, but what you can think about is that now we understand the light rays are going there, we actually say that light rays going in absolutely any direction from this object will all end up at that point. They're all going to cross at that point. If I was to look at the image, say, here, well, at this point, I'm going to see some of my light from the top, from the top of this object is going to appear here. Some of the light's going to appear here, some of the light's going to appear here, and it's going to appear in like this big smudgy blur. So that image is going to appear fuzzy, I'm not going to see it nice and sharply. But if I place a screen here, whoop, that's going really dodgy now, if I place a screen there, I'm going to get a nice sharp image. Now, for your purposes, um, that's about as much as you need to understand. You need to be able to do this to say where the image falls. Um, but I think it's, it's useful to think a little bit about why that does fall, and that's something you'll be doing in the lesson. If it still doesn't make sense, please come and chat with me about it. Um, now, when we uh, look at uh, this, I've slapped. I'm just going to change this acronym slightly because I uh, got a bit dyslexic. Um, when we work out where an image is being formed and describe an image, we can use the acronym SALT. Um, and SALT is something that you're going to use to help you understand uh, the four key things that you need to say about an image. So you have salt. That is about the size of the image. A is its attitude. Uh, the L is for its location. And T is for the type. So when it comes to size, you have two options. You can have magnified or you can have diminished. And hopefully it's fairly obvious which is which. Um, in this instance, um, it's about the same actually. 
Um, but if you find that the arrow that you draw is much bigger than the object, then it's a magnified image. If the arrow that you draw is much smaller, it's a diminished object. Attitude is basically, is it the right way up? If you think about the one that we've just done, uh, it is not the right way up. The object's pointing up, our arrow points down. So if it is, if it's the right way up, uh, we call it upright. If it's not the right way up, we call it inverted. Location is where is the image, um, which you've done uh, by finding it. And then the type, there are two types. Uh, it can be a virtual image, or it can be a real image. Now, obviously, if you can see it, it's probably real. So real's not a great word to use for an image, um, but it comes down to where the image appears. So if the image is on the same side as the uh, object, it's a real image. Nope, I've got that the wrong way around. If, if it's on the opposite side of the image, it's a real image. So let me just erase that. My apologies. Uh, so it's a real image if it's on the opposite side as the object. It's virtual if it's on the same side. So in this case, um, this should be a other pause, and if I didn't, if a question didn't come up, then I forgot to insert a question. Um, hopefully, you all said uh, that this is a real image because it's on the same side. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the lesson. But basically, real images uh, they can be projected onto things, um, whereas virtual images you, you observe them, so you need some more lenses to, to produce something that you can see. Uh, so here I have four lenses, and what I would like you to do is try to describe the image for each one. Okay, so this first one here, this is uh, a real image. It is uh, diminished because it's smaller. Uh, it is inverted because it's upside down and the location is where we see it. Number two, uh, that is neither magnified nor uh, diminished. Um, so this is same size. Uh, it is real and it is inverted. And then number three, uh, this is still real. It is now magnified. Uh, and it is also inverted. And the last one, uh, this one is a virtual image because the object is on the same side as the image. Uh, it is upright because the arrow is pointing in the same direction as the object, uh, and it is uh, magnified, because the image is bigger than the object. It really is that simple. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of complexity when we go on to talk about uh, concave lenses. Uh, so thinking about diverging lenses and their ray diagrams, but really that's all there is to it from this one. Uh, in the lesson, you're going to be doing loads of practice with ray diagrams. So one of the things that I would really make sure that you can do is this section. Excuse me, this section here, that you know where the rays should be drawn um, and you know where they should end up. If you can nail that skill, you can do absolutely fine in your IGCSE. Thanks for watching, and once again, I will see you in our lesson.